What's going on, guys? It's your boy, Wayne the Train. Right here, you got me bench pressing. I wanted to start a little series. Uh, I've seen other people do them. So this is my road to 315 bench. I've said before that my pressing is horrific. I want to change that. And so I am going to work my behind off about it. I'm going to press more. I'm going to start doing three pressing days a week. And I'm just going to actually give it some effort. You know, um, what is it? I didn't really like getting the like quote unquote powerlifting. Like I always like lifting heavy, but I like the formal powerlifting stuff to like 2021, 2022 ish. And when I did, like I really just focused on my squat, my deadlift. I thought my bench was okay, but I focused on my squat, my deadlift because I knew like those could greatly be improved. And so that's what I've really been focusing on the past year. It's time to transition to that bench and see where it goes. So. You got me here starting off this morning with a really light bench. I said before I had shoulder issues, so I'm taking that weight back to the bottom. I am practicing the basics, and I just started off a new mezzo cycle. I just started off a new workout plan, and so everything's real fresh. So the weight today, I think it gets up to 240. Arguably, maybe a little too heavy, but afterwards, like just a couple of days afterwards when I'm recording this, I don't feel too sore. It doesn't feel too bad. So I think it was fine. The plan is to stay at the same weight for about eh, two, two to three weeks, ride it out, see how it feels, and then gradually bump it up 10 15 percent see how it feels, really focus on getting my reps down, getting my form down, getting that really efficient. Uh, neural pattern locked in so that when the heavyweight comes back i'm ready so that's what this is guys this is my road to 315 bench thanks for tuning in and yeah enjoy so let's talk about my approach real fast because uh i know what to do i i, I firmly wholeheartedly believe i know what to do uh that's just me enjoying my pre-workout uh I watch tons of programming videos. I watch tons of st super strong people lift. I've seen people do it in life. I know that it's it's a matter, a confluence of a couple factors, right? Uh, the first one is you got to press. You got to press and build that skill. Uh, and the way I want to do that is I now have three pressing days versus the one I had last week. So a big jump, but I've always been a volume heavy person, so I believe I can handle it. Uh, what you're watching now is my horizontal pressing day, my primary bench. This is when I want a chest pump. Uh, I'm trying to, you know, I need bigger chest. I think my pecs are a little lagging. So bigger pec muscles give me more strength. So that's the goal here is to practice that bench form, but also, you know, to get a lot of blood flow in the pecs and to drive that hypertrophic response. Uh, my second, my, hold on, sorry, drawing a blank. Oh, my second pressing day is a shoulder pressing day so the first is horizontal the second is vertical because i do have shoulder issues and it's not to the point of an injury it's never that but like definitely irritated and it's like uh something's not right and if i keep pressing something's really not going to be right and i like i said before i do believe part of that is i stopped doing shoulder days uh, for years for years when i was younger i stopped doing shoulder i did shoulders I did like chest tries and shoulders. I did back and shoulders at one point. <clears throat> but when I started like getting into lifting heavy, it was just two <laughs> two leg days, one squat, one dead, a uh, barbell slash back day, or barbell, barbell row slash back day, and then a chest day. And so there was no real attention to the shoulders. I stopped doing shoulder accessory exercises. So I believe that had a firm part to do with it. So I have a dedicated shoulder day. Again, just like the chest, I'm trying, trying to drive a hypertrophic response in my shoulders, get a lot of blood flow, and I got a little footage from that, so I, I think I'll probably show you guys that. Then my last pressing day is a tricep-focused pressing day. So again, I'm just trying to get bigger triceps, get a big pump, get a lot of blood in the muscles. I'm pressing down, I'm stretching the triceps in a variety of days. Basically, I have three pressing days. I want to cover every pressing angle I can. Horizontal, vertical, and whatever I can with the tricep. So, uh, I do. So, uh, back to this day one bench day. You saw me benching. You saw me doing some IYT raises for my shoulders. And now I am doing some tricep extensions. These were kind of hit or miss. I only really did one set. But I really found it like if I'm benching, if I'm squatting, deadlifting, 
if I do like an accessory right after that compound, just like not exactly heavy, but challenging weight, something to get a lot of blood flow to pump that muscle up, I find it really helps when I come back to that compound. So for like chest, I really want to get a good tricep pump and then come right back and really focus on getting a good pressing unit going on here. Uh, I did some single arms behind the head. How do I put it? When your arm is like that lateral way, when it's sideways, it gets a nice stretch that it's hard to get versus when it's kind of facing forward and back like they are now. Both sides are effective, but you got to train the muscle in a variety of ways, and that is the attack plan. That's what we're going after. All right, so I told you guys, like, you know, what this is going to be about. I'm trying to bench 315. I explained a little bit about my approach. As I keep going on, I'll get a little more into detail. Uh, <laughs> kind of working it on the fly. Uh, I think that's okay for the most part. I think for everybody you could do it once you have, like, that basic lifting knowledge. But, like, like I said, like, I've been lifting for years. So, like, I'm very comfortable. My knowledge has only grown substantially in these past couple of years. And I'm going to make an excuse. Take it what you will. I do believe, like, some of the reasons, like, my other lifts have started lacking is because, like, I kind of subsided to focus in becoming a better lifter. I still love to lift and still just lift it. But these past couple of years, I've really been dedicated to becoming the best coach I can be, learning all I can be about the body, uh, lifting, and there's so much to learn. So I'm still, uh, still very much a newbie, but I am very comfortable with my knowledge now. I, I know a, a crap ton, and it's just putting it to effective use. I do it all the time with my clients. Now it's time to take that same energy back to myself. Now, what I'm doing now, you see me bench one set. I didn't get up. I'm taking that weight back. Uh, I love my reps. I realize I'm a volume heavy guy. And I realize sometimes when I'm touching heavy weights, I can move it. But like I come back the next week and I can still move it, but not like a real substantial increase. And so... I know it doesn't happen that fast. Let me put that caveat there. But I realized that if I could just get a little more stimulus, so if I could myo rep that heavy set, take a heavy set, one to three reps, take a couple rest, and then come back for a couple more reps, that lets me squeeze in more stimulus. It's a little bit like density work because I'm taking not a long break, so that blood is still in that muscle. It's still staying tight that whole time. It lets me squeeze in a little more volume, a little more stimulus, with a little bit of recovery on top, I do believe in have seen success. I do think it's working. So I'm going to keep trying to myo rep my heavy sets, uh, at least for a certain period of time. I don't do it all sets. Usually just try to do it the last heavy set. And I usually only do it for like two or, two or three myo rep sets afterwards. And so if I notice like a substantial drop off in performance, if I'm doing like four heavy reps and I can no longer do two, or I'm really struggling, I'll cut it there. Otherwise, I'm going to keep running with that, filling up that stimulus, and yeah, we'll get back to the workout today. You got me back to doing my IYT raises. These are just shoulder raises in a variety of positions. Uh, laying down the bench kind of prevents those other muscles from taking over so much, and so I really like them. They felt really good. I noticed that if I don't do my, no, I'm sorry, excuse me, if I do do uh, shoulder warm-up, do do some kind of shoulder exercise, some kind of shoulder mobility before like my two, two heavy sets of bench. Uh, again, great benefits from that. My shoulder doesn't bother me so much. So I do truly believe it's just a lack of muscle, uh, a lack of using it so often that it's giving me my shoulder issues. And I believe with this extra day and of course doing shoulder exercises on my bench day again, it's going to start to fix my problem slowly by surely. All right, new exercise. You see me doing my skull crushers. 
these are some tricep press downs. I have found that if you can get up against a wall, it makes a hell of a difference when doing these press downs. You can just look at my arm right now, like by that window. You can see like the tricep flexing, like just being able to support your back and just really focus on pressing those arms down, coming up maybe a little bit above 90 degrees. So you still have a ton of tension on that muscle. Really effective. You saw me do my straight set against the wall. This is kind of like that cheat set, but it's in a different angle. So I really find it important to hit. Uh, it's not a tricep day. It's a bench day. And so I didn't want to spend too much time. So uh, usually I'll just bang out a ton of reps and a couple of sets and a couple of really fast sets with my triceps on my bench day. I still get a tricep pump. It's not that much of a focus. I just want enough blood in the triceps to support my pressing. I don't even mind the little shoulder movement because, again, I'm trying to get a little blood in my shoulders, I'm trying to just move them around more, make them a little stronger because somehow, some way, they've gotten weaker, and that's an issue. And so you see me playing around with the weights here. I switch my grips. I love the pronated grip, that pressing down with the knuckles facing the ceiling. But I also feel like supinated palms up. It has a really good place in tricep extensions. Ooh, you see that back moving? That's what you kind of avoid when you're up against the wall. But that supinated grip is still really, really, really helpful. And yeah, I like it. Sorry, my phone messed up there. The palms up, I feel like they both help. Switch them around, try it. Move your hands in, move them out. See what works for you. Ooh, back to that heavier set of bench. Uh, yeah. Look at this, guys. Look at this. Trying to keep that butt flat. Practice that straight bar path. Keep those elbows in. Come back to the same place. Clear lockout. Not exactly a clear lockout. I can lock out a little better than that, actually. I will work on that. But you get the point. You get the point. Hello, darkness, my old friend. <laughs> That's what it feels like every time after a heavy set. I think my shoulder was irritating me. But I went back for that smoke one more time. But as you can see, I think I went to go push it out. I got a lift off and I'm like, you know what? It's not feeling right. Screw it. So I just reacted. it. I'm like, I'm good. I'm good. I'm not even going to press the issue. It's not worth it. We got to learn how to draw the line and call it quits. And I mean, for some people, they can do that. For some, they don't want to. Whatever. I still wanted pressing volume. So I hit that isolateral chest machine. There are two 45s and a 10. That was too light. So I put two 45s and a 25 for 115 on there. That felt much better. Uh, again, focusing on that pressing volume. My shoulder, no trouble at all here. It literally gives me no trouble other than the bench. That's why, you know, I'm thinking my issues are what they are. But I'm going for a nice deep stretch here. I'm feeling, feel, trying to feel it nice and slow. Machines are nice. Like, when I train people, I like to break it into levels. Like, level one would be one of these machines. Like, a very structured machine that only lets you move in that plane of motion. Level two would be a cable. And then level three would be, like, a dumbbell, a free weight movement. I love machines because they lock you in. It's really hard to screw up a machine. So, if you want to pump... You can get on a machine. It makes it a lot simpler to just use that intended muscle. And that's what I was doing. Another machine I'm doing is a chest fly. And I do apologize because I think I just told you guys a lie. I, on my dumbbell flies, on my dumbbell flies, I do feel a little irritation in, that, in my shoulders. And who knows with that. But on the machine, it's no issue. So I'm getting a nice big stretch. I'm pausing. I didn't always feel issues with the dumbbell fly. In fact, I used to be able to do it with like 40s and 60s. So I'm sure once I start doing my shoulders, that too will disappear. But this is an accessory exercise. You will see me myo rep the hell out of my accessories because I'm just trying to get a pump, man. I'm just chasing a pump and I don't really feel like wasting a bunch of time on them. I would rather spend more time on my compounds and then milk the accessories for some hard mile upsets. I'm at that point in my lifting career where, you know, I can call it, I got a good enough pump. I can tell when I hit a muscle enough in a certain position where it's no longer effective. You know, after three or four heavy sets, how much are you getting out of the flies that you didn't get out the first three that if you want more, 
Go revise your technique and stop wasting time. Don't, don't be sitting on machines forever. More tricep press downs. Uh, I told you I like switching the grip. No, these are not press downs. These are tricep extensions overhead. I like switching the grip. I like switching the handle. I like switching the hand positioning. I feel it is also effective for just really feeling uh, stretching those triceps and a whole bunch of different angles and just moving them. So you see me go nice and low. Uh, I noticed something here and it kind of irritated me when I was doing it. I kind of kept switching the way I was doing the reps. And like, that's okay with intent, but like it makes it hard to standardize. So I really should have just been going all the way from the bottom to the top or from the middle to the top. Now I could have done both, but I really hate mixing the two because it just makes things a little more complicated. But hey, it's, it's really not that big of a deal at the end of the day. I did my set from the bottom. Now I'm doing my press downs because again, I told you guys, I just love my repping the hell out of accessories and just pumping a lot of the blood in the muscle. I am not there to waste time. I'm going to get that work. So I'll let you guys enjoy. Okay, now you have my heavier kind of compound tricep exercise. Uh, I was going for French press. That was my intention. My body did not feel like it, so I just said, let me do some barbell skull crushers. They still have the utility. I, there's a difference between using a dumbbell and a barbell. Uh, once you're experienced, you kind of start to feel it out. I tried some Z-press here. Uh, didn't really feel it. But the difference between a barbell and a dumbbell, there's just like it, this synergistic energy, this synergistic feel to using a barbell. You can get heavier. It feels better than just using a dumbbell which does have a greater range of motion and does let you single out weaknesses. So they are effective, but it's just my opinion. Here's another set of me doing that isolateral chest machine, uh, taking it real slow, real slow. Uh, here's the rest. I think I'm going to Maya rep it out. I think I'm going to Maya rep it out. I looked way depressed there, guys. Way depressed. Yeah, I don't even know what these are called, but these are like the chest raises. Usually do them on a cable machine. You start by your hips and then bring your arms in closer together, squeezing your pecs at the top. Uh, this is a chest day, so I'm trying to get more chest volume in and a lot of chest blood. Now, I realize in retrospect, <laughs> I'm not actually doing that much chest today, so I will review that and then come back. Another benefit of be being a trainer is while I do have to be a little objective, I get to pick and choose. I have a really good understanding of the exercises, so I get to play with stuff week to week. It's not that big of a deal. If you are in the gym driving stimulus and recovering, it's you're going to grow in the end. It's We don't have to make this that big of a deal. So I'm playing with my hand positioning, seeing what feels best. I find that really works. I got some heavy dips, heavy dips. These are nice for my shoulders, my triceps, and my back. Once again, these may have been better placed on my tricep day, but you live, you learn. I think I have a 45 between my legs, a 40, 40 pound dumbbell. I'm just trying to go nice and low with these. I have went heavy. Uh, I have went, I think I had 290 that one time, maybe even 100 pounds and done some dips. I'll get back up there one day. These are really good for your shoulders, really good for your triceps. You just, people just need to be a little more mindful of the range of motion they're using, in my opinion. Uh, sometimes people aren't locking out all the way. Sometimes people are leaning too forward or back. And if they know what they're doing, then screw me. But if they don't, uh, be mindful. Here are some squeeze press. Once again, just trying to squeeze that chest. I did flat press earlier. So I felt as if it would be not so effective if I did it again. Switched up the level to an incline. Just hit the upper chest a little more. These are kind of tough reps. I probably shouldn't have dropped it on my chest, but oh well. Felt good enough. No, I remember. I had to have your weight. And so I was going for a chest pump like I told you guys. When you're going for a pump, it's not always about pressing the heavier weights. Sometimes it's about moving lightweight quickly and effectively and using that mind-muscle connection. So I went from the 70s down to the 60s. That's exactly what I did. And got a little hip drive to start off there. 
And then bam. Yeah, nah, I think I was a little tired out from that set. Still good though. Still good to learn that grit and to learn the push. It's really good chest exercise. If you don't do them, I suggest you try them. Hey, hey, back to my skull crushers, tricep extensions. I wonder when it goes to one point, when it stops from one point to another. So I'm doing my skull crushers in front of my head here, thinking about keeping my elbows up. I would like to see them a little more stiller in the future, but once again, not that pressed. Uh, yeah, pressing, pressing, pressing. I think it's important to change the angle of how you do stuff. These are slight variations, but these slight differences really kind of drive the difference between what you're doing and what the big players aren't doing. So taking it nice and slow, trying to feel as squeeze as I finish up today. I did a couple reps. No, I attempted to do a couple behind the head because I find that's a really good stretch. But my elbows are bending very awkwardly today. Here's another set of some heavy dips. Hope you guys enjoy this super nice angle. Nice and low. Nice and low. I heard someone say of all the pressing motions, you can press the most in a downward position. So like when, you know, in a dip. And that's why people can load up really heavy dips. The, the dip machine, I think I have a video somewhere on one of my pages. I did like four plates, man. I did four plates. That's 360 pounds of like pressing down. So why is my bench why is my bench only 200 but yeah so getting some heavy pressing on those triceps people uh i dropped the weight just trying to burn out here with my own body weight i raised my legs because it makes it a little harder but i was done anyway so yeah that's it. yeah uh so another set of squeeze presses here we're getting pretty close to the end of this, guys. So this is episode one of That Road to 315 Bench, my chest focus day. There's a couple more things I want to tell you guys when we get there. But yeah, this is my approach. If you have any questions, comments, go down below. If you like this video, like it. You want to see more of this content, let me know. Uh, Okay, yeah, and the last thing I finished out the day with was just some decline push-ups. Man, I thought I had a clip. I did these with a 45 on my back. Oh, it's there. I, <laughs> I'm just going for a really deep stretch. I feel like regular push-ups are a little too easy, so I had a little bit more resistance, just trying to really finish off those pecs. Like I said, the goal of today was to press in that horizontal motion to get a lot of blood in the uh, pecs and to get some heavy pressing down, some heavy movements with those primary movers. So that's what I'm doing. I'm burning out now. And yeah, we got a shoulder day and a tricep. Uh, I'll, in the future, I believe I'm going to try and record at least one video from this road a week to give you guys kind of a bird's eye view update, see where we're going from there. And yeah, you guys are appreciated.